which is in one minute. Okay. Would you do a countdown? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> There's one attendees. Oh, how, how do you see how many attendees? <laughs> um, at the bottom of the screen, there, there's uh, participants. Oh, right. Okay. Okay, I, I can add one more that's right next to me. Okay. So there's two participants. <laughs> yeah, there's two. Hi. <laughs> okay. All right. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, welcome morning. to the session of making the best out of any situation. Um, so this um, webinar is conducted in conjunction with the International MSME Day by their Salam Enterprise. Um, my name is Umi. I will be moderating this session and I'll pass the floor to Chris to introduce yourself. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Chris. I'm from Vilago.com. And uh, Vilago.com is an e-commerce marketplace for anyone to do business on digital environment. And we are, Vilago is uh, started in Brunei and uh, we have our team in Brunei. So yeah. Um, Thai? Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Hey, um, yeah, yeah. My name is Thai, and uh, I'm from Pony Divers. So we run the dive center. We're located in Sarasa and KB. And uh, we've actually recently uh, sort of started uh, expanding our brand to also include commercial diving services and uh, uh, engineering services as well for offshore and construction, and also a corporate team building for, uh, for corporate companies. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Ambrose. Hi, morning. Uh, I'm from Biz Advice Services, which we are basically financial and business consultants. Uh, we have a array and a suite of services. Basically, we can do most requirements for business, anything ranging from accounting, finance, payroll, HR, legals, setting up companies, or even closing down companies and business strategies. All right. And that's basically what we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, can I just ask all of you, when did you start your businesses? When did you for, begin? For Vilago, we actually uh, we actually started from living space in 2017. After a year, then we 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 shift the the business uh shift the platform from uh from just furniture related products to uh multi categories um uh, in 2018 so Until what made you, what what made you decide to do the shift from the on, an online furniture store to um, an online marketplace because of our market size and the the demand and also uh and also another thing that made me change is because I think that since I have, I'm going to develop a platform, why am I only just offer furnitures? I can even create more category. So, so yeah, so I can make more impact. Yeah. So you found another opportunity from just an online furniture to a bigger market. Bigger market. And then I can share the, and, and, and then I can share the cost with other business owners. Mm -hmm. Because they do not need to invest more by sharing the cost, we can make this uh, marketplace greater. Yeah. How about you, Tai? When did Pony never started? Uh, quite a while ago, I guess. I, I came back to Brunei in two thousand eight, so I actually started. It started out as a dive club first. It was Pony Dive Club uh, back in two thousand eight, and then we registered the business Pony Divers in two thousand nine. So we actually were supposed to celebrate our ten year anniversary on. March 2020, but as uh, everyone knows, that's the peak of COVID, so we have to postpone that to later in the year. How about you, Ambrose? Oh, mine actually started a similar business in the 1980s in the UK. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's a long time ago. <laughs> I left the UK in the 90s and worked from various industries. I worked in Malaysia, in Hong Kong, in Indonesia, and then 
I landed up in Brunei, which I ran G4S, Security Corp, mm. for 10 years and then to ISB for three years. And then I decided I'll restart again. So about eight years ago, I set up this advice. But now it was very different from what it was before because there was internet. <laughs> <laughs> when I started in the 80s, I had a two, le less than a 286 computer. Yeah, and really? I went around. <laughs> yeah, it was quite amazing. Such a different uh, profile. So here, having so much of tools that I was able to create a platform, very similar to what Chris is saying, providing yeah. financial services, accounting is only one part of it. But if I can provide every other type of service for a business, whether it's a startup or a mid-range of going to build, build itself up, then I've got a platform where you just come into the platform and I got everything you need in yeah. one sort of a one-stop service. But that model can only be done in Brunei <laughs> because of the size. Yeah. I, I, I doubt whether you can do something like this in Malaysia or in the bigger countries because the competition is quite heavy. But then, then again, uh, there are many specialists who will just do one portion of it. Yeah. But I do believe a, a platform like this can work. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Mm. How, how has business been um, for the past few months for all of you? Because we know, as, as we all know, the pandemic has really changed the landscape for businesses um, for the past few months. So what, have, what changes have you made or what you've introduced to adapt to this so-called new norm? For Vilago, we actually, <clears throat> we actually, we actually did not change pretty much. In fact, we actually boost the business <laughs> another way because of the demand. Yeah. Well, because <clears throat> since a lot of people have gone online, I think um, platforms such as yourself have really been getting gaining traction for the past few months since I think March. Yeah. Yeah. We, we it, uh, especially during the pandemic, we actually got a lot of traffic. But right after that, because of the 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 the, the COVID has been uh, uh, manageable, I mean control. So then the uh, the the public change their shift back their <laughs> their ordinary their normal shopping. Uh, uh, so so of course. Uh, there is a impact to our platform on the traffic. The traffic has been going down like this. So of course, uh, of course, still there are there are there are some uh, shoppers that are still looking for work for for digital marketplace uh, on doing their shopping and 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 yeah, we we, we are instead of uh, giving up, we still have to continue running. We can't give up. Yeah. <laughs> So before uh, the pandemic, how many vendors do you have on your platform and how much has that changed? 30. So now how many? For the past two years, we've been uh, running, uh, we, we has been running for only 20 to 30 vendors. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we continue approaching, but, but uh, there is no... There is no demand from the from this market yeah. yet, and then uh, uh, probably some of the business owner maybe they think that uh, is is not yet a necessary things to to be to be part on. So and uh, digital marketing is not a a, a necess is not yet a necessary things in the in the business owner mindset yet. So so thanks to pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the pandemic, and then uh, because of the pandemic, there is the the start of the demand. So uh, we have grown from we have grown from thirty vendor to almost uh, uh, coming to one hundred vendors. Yeah, coming to one hundred vendors this week, this uh, this uh, two months, two three months time. Mm -hmm. mm. And our products also increasing. Yeah. So yeah, there are there are a lot of uh, business owner. Uh, we, we we start working together. Yeah. How about you, Thai? Like, what happened the past few months for Pony Divers? Since um, all the sport seems to be <laughs> on hold at the moment. 
Yes. So a lot has happened. Uh, we are in the tourism industry, so this is really affecting uh, very largely anybody related to the tourism industry. Uh, but also, not only because of that, uh, the timing is really bad. So I think I mentioned earlier that we were planning to do our 10th anniversary in a very big launch in March 2020. So actually, the, the last, the probably four or five months before that, we've been spending a lot of money uh, preparing, renovating, uh, rebranding, and uh, we know one of the big launch and spend a lot of money and we're like, okay, we're gonna get all the money back uh, after March. Yeah. Uh, that, <laughs> you know, all of that got, got pushed back. So the, the timing for us was a, probably one of the worst possible timing because normally when, when a business hits, uh, you know, a, a, a bad, a negative event like this, they, have, uh, they probably have two or three months of resources, uh, cash, financing, to fall back on, but we had already used all of that up, uh, preparing for the big launch in March. So uh, when when that hit, it was it was uh, it wasn't it wasn't good, and it's still not it is still not good. So I think we had about uh, eighty percent drop in in revenue, uh, probably about over two hundred thousand dollars of losses, you know, in in cancelled uh, bookings, uh, cancelled projects, postponed projects. So uh, it's. We, we put all our staff on, on three days a week uh, for, for a couple months. And, and now we're slowly, uh, it took some time for us to pivot our business away uh, to alternative uh, revenue streams of different products. And, and it's sort of slowly picking up again right now. I think uh, everybody is starting to get a bit more comfortable coming out, especially with, with the good news on COVID uh, in Brunei. Uh, so we're trying to sort of leverage off that to, with a lot of local products and a lot of new products. Uh, to replace that, that missing income from tourists, uh, from, uh, you know, even uh, with my new division focusing on commercial uh, services and, and commercial projects, even those were delayed because uh, we, you know, our boats are, are uh, chartered for BSP surveys, you know, and BSP projects were also on hold for a while. Yeah. So it's actually affected uh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, I think it's slowly picking up uh, bit by bit now. I mean, every month it gets a little bit better. It gets a little bit better. Uh, we're hoping by, by next month, a lot of our staff can come back to uh, uh, five or six days a week. So they're close to full time. Uh, so, so yeah, I think it's, it's definitely forced us to be a bit more creative uh, in how we market and, and how we identify uh, which uh, which people are likely to spend money with us. <laughs> yeah. So, and we're, we're doing our best to make sure that we can uh, cater to that, you know, that, uh, you know, we, we started doing private groups. Uh, we, we did uh, lessons at people's homes. Uh, we, we did a lot of different things just to make sure that we can get some revenue in because we, you know, we, from the first day I told my staff, I said, we're not, we're not going to let anybody off. We're not going to fire anybody over this. So we're going to do our best to, to make sure we have any, enough income to keep everybody yeah. and, and, and to keep things running despite the very, very bad timing <laughs> that we were put in. <laughs> yeah. When are you planning your anniversary? Oh, uh, so at the moment, uh, on hold, because we, we don't know the situation yet, but yeah. it'll likely be towards the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So we're expecting probably September, October time, uh, but uh, nothing concrete yet, because we want to make sure that uh, that everything is, is up and running and everything's ready uh, with, with, with the public, with the health, when we do a big event. So this com um, commercial diving, have, have you always done this before? Or it was just not as advertised as it is, as it is, as it is now. Yeah, so when we first opened Pony Divers, uh, we were just doing recreational diving. So taking people out, uh, teaching them how to dive. Uh, we, and we realized that uh, because of the volume of tourists and, and the size of the Brunei market, we definitely needed other products. So within a year, uh, we, we got into water sports, so we did parasailing, run about jet skis the next year. And the year after that, we started getting requests as well to uh, do underwater search and recovery for, for items that drop into the sea yeah. uh, or accidents at sea. And we realized there was a big market for that. And that was in 2012. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we angled our business and we started getting, you know, I went overseas for training. We got some certifications related to that. And we've actually been doing a, a, quite a lot of jobs for the government, for local construction companies since 2012, but we've never advertised it. So that's always been word of mouth. And yeah. finally, 
in 2018, we figured, okay, we better rebrand our business and restructure our business to, uh, right now it's a pony group, Sundar and Burhad. So uh, we've been very busy the last two years and, and the, the new division or the new entity is a pony marine, which deals with this uh, commercial services. And uh, so we've always been doing it, uh, but we're definitely advertising it more. We're meeting up a lot more clients right now. And uh, because of COVID, we are pushing that a lot stronger uh, yeah. because we definitely see that. I mean, the, these kind of services have to go on, um, yeah. whether or not there's a, <laughs> there's a pandemic. Yeah. And, uh, exactly. So yeah. <laughs> they just get delayed sometimes, uh, but they still have to go on. So we're definitely seeing uh, more and more jobs coming up in that sector. Uh, so we're trying to uh, really push uh, forward uh, very hard in that, in that sector. Okay. All right. Thank you, Amtai. Um, Just um, for Ambrose, you've, I know you've mentored quite a few startups and entrepreneurs. So during this COVID time, like, do people come up to you and ask you what to do with their business since it, it's not moving or how is yeah, it? For most, you? most definitely. <laughs> I think uh, our business, unlike others, has actually had more inquiries than before. Hmm. Um, because of issues uh, that they're having. So we had a lot of, we had some, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, consultancy requirement from the f &B side, the hotel. And so we've been helping them out in trying to work out uh, different ways of looking at it. We had people who came up to us and, and asked for uh, basically ways of um, approaching clients in terms of using online platforms. And so we help them with that. Uh, basically, I mean, uh, a number of them were running out of cash because the, the, the biggest thing we found that during the COVID time, quite obviously, revenue is disappearing. So they are having to dig out money from their own pockets or savings or whatever they had to maintain. So the question was, do I continue and ride through this turbulence or do I just shut the whole place down now? So, and it's difficult. There's a lot of emotions involved in it, uh, a lot of calculations, a lot of debt to look at. So we've helped clients to, 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 to go over those problems or try to find ways of actually doing. So in one case, it was a shutdown and trying to sell all the assets off at the wrong time because you can't sell assets during COVID period who wants to invest in a dollar for a restaurant. <laughs> But uh, in other cases, we worked out how to become more lean during COVID because some of them had over overstaffed. So we tried to work out how do you keep them lean because a lot of them thought, oh, let's sack all the staff and just keep a few, just to keep going. So I said, COVID is not here forever. So when it, COVID is over, how are you going to get all your staff back? And you can have a problem. And so we look, worked out different ways of actually cutting down your costs. I mean, like example, no OT, take all your holidays now, maybe go on slightly lower salary for, for now, yeah, take a pay cut. Yeah. So they did all of that. And so one of those businesses managed, I still, in fact, two of them are managing okay and, and it's now picking up. But in one business, this is interesting. We, we came up with a plan that now is the time to change and rebrand when COVID is over. And that's what they are working on, a total rebranding, because what they realize is that whatever offerings they were offering after COVID, it may not be relevant, especially f &B. With the number of people, you, you've got to keep the, um, what do you call it, the social distancing. Yeah, and, and most people are prefer to probably run in, grab the food and go out. Yeah. Yeah, so, and, and, and cover numbers in, 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 in the F&B business, if you had 20 tables before, you have probably put in maybe 12 tables now. Now, you know, a f and business works on turnover. Mm. A number of times that people come in and go out of the uh, restaurant. So if you got half, a uh, 50% of what you used to take, your revenue automatically comes down. And you still need the same number of waiters, cooks, <laughs> So it's quite very, very interesting. So we came up with many, many types of ways and plans to actually address the various issues. And one of the things I'll, I'll explain is that there's a new, you know, everybody talks about market, uh, 
whether people want what you're selling, etc. There's a new thing that is in the market. It's called fear. Yeah. Yeah. Fear becomes part of your business process now. When you're thinking or doing anything, fear becomes a big issue now. True. So there's a question here from one of the uh, attend attendees. Um, I think this could go to Chris or Ty because I know Pony Divers also also has a website. Um, she's asking how to, may I ask how to start an online platform? <laughs> <laughs> Come and see me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what kind of, what kind of online platform? There's, there's a lot of different types. Is there, is there any <laughs> further info on that? <laughs> Let me see. Let's ask. Um, Property, there you go. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I could I could say a couple of things. I think I think there there is already uh, some online platforms for property. Um, I mean, the most basic one is uh, there's there's quite a few Facebook groups uh, right up uh, right now, and, and I think I have seen a, a couple that didn't do so well. I think they they tried to launch a website, sort of like a directory listing of properties, but. Um, it, it didn't do that well and, and it, you really need everybody to come on. It, you need a, a platform where everybody knows it's there and everybody wants to check it out and everybody wants to list their properties. And this is where it gets difficult in Brunei. So uh, first of all, um, I think people, the younger generation definitely is online a lot, but the older generation are not. And the older generation may be the one that has the properties to list. <laughs> and is interested yeah. to buy properties, <laughs> so so it may. Uh, I think it, it it can be done. It is, but it is challenging uh, for an online uh, platform for property. Uh, there has been many different types of online platforms that list services, uh, directories, uh, companies, and, and I'm I'm not sure exactly how how or why they didn't work, but uh, a lot of them didn't actually work that well. Uh, in the past. Now, there are a lot of new ones coming out in the last year or two, and I think they have been getting a lot more innovative mm -hmm. in how they do it. Uh, and of course, everybody has a mobile phone this few years, so, so it is becoming a, a much easier and, and definitely uh, uh, something that, that could be done. Now, just a little bit on, on my end uh, with Pony Divers, I think, I think everyone in Brunei uh, knows we, we are very active on social media. Uh, we, we spend mm. uh, a lot of money. <laughs> I, I think I saw, I saw a, a, a Facebook uh, report. I think we've spent close to $60,000 on Facebook oh over the last many, many years. Uh, and this is, you know, we advertise in Brunei and also all around the world uh, on our services. Uh, and, and we time it along with our promotions. And uh, we, we have a team that's very active in trying to engage with our clients, uh, our potential customers. We, we watch the ads, the responses, and, and uh, we, we, we try a lot of ways to stay engaged with, with, with people over social media. Um, so I, I don't know if that helps, but um, definitely stay engaged with, with your people somehow over social media. Okay, so um, just a question. So for things like property and for something that you do, Chris, um, do you engage the vendors first or the customers first? Vendors. Vendors first. Because without vendor, we don't have product on our platform. Because mm -hmm. we are providing end-to-end -end business solution on our platform. And all the products is from our vendors. It's not from us. Yeah, we, we can't do a parallel yeah. business on here. So that uh, uh, then it will become, uh, because Brunei market is still small. So uh, although we may not know each other today, definitely they will know me later if I do something bad. Right? So integrity is something that we have to maintain. I mean, uh, so I think uh, business ethic is very important. So do yeah, you so we offer platform, it means we only offer platform. Yeah. 
So do you divide your team into like um, one deals with the customers, one deals with the vendors, or is it? Uh, Not at this moment because I, I deal all the vendors by myself because at this moment <laughs> our team is still very small. And one <laughs> one month ago, one month ago, uh, not to not to scare you away because uh, we are only three of us. One month ago, we are only three of us. So we don't have any other people than only three of us. <laughs> not so we lago. Huh? Four people now. Uh, now that we have already uh, six, include myself. Okay. Mm. Now we how have you, already six. How do you convince businesses to join Wilago? Because I know there's quite a few other platforms that's available in Brunei. Like, how do you attract uh, them to join Wilago? Well, well, of course, Wilago is not only end-to-end -end business solution we are offering, but also digital marketing also we are offering to them. Oh, okay. Digi I think digital marketing is something, uh, well, like uh, Ambrose say, uh, 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 the older generation definitely they are, they probably not, not online yet, but the younger generation, they are definitely all on uh, mobile phone or yeah, on digital environment. Mm -hmm. so, so, so yeah, so we, we, we started from there. Mm -hmm. We start engage vendor first. And especially to the young younger generation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have anything to add, Ambrose? Yeah. <laughs> I think Chris and Guy covered a lot of what you expect on an <laughs> online platform. Because online platform basically is a marketing tool. So the look, what makes a difference? So answering what the previous the question on having an online platform for property. Now that's a bit different it's not a you can't it's not a product that you can send to someone or they can come and just buy it so therefore the, the look there, there there are a few platforms uh, in the market but i believe it's the look how it looks whether you have uh, something that makes a difference to attract people to look at the house because properties are basically the look what is inside and the information you can provide uh, online without even speaking to someone i mean the first look you have and how the picture looks like is already an attraction. Yeah. So I, in fact, strangely, I was talking to one of my, my staff and we said, hey, how nice it would be if, if some of this looks in there was in 3D format. That means if a very short video inside your, your website that actually gives you a quick run through the property on video, maybe less than one minute or 30 seconds. Now that will make a difference compared to most other websites which are just flat pictures that you flick through. So it's, it's finding all this type of different uh, ways of actually uh, people who come in can, can see that there is a difference in your platform. But on the other side, as what Chris and, and Tai said, it also has to be uh, marketed in the proper way. So through social media or whatever, the people get to know there's this particular platform uh, uh, that you have. Also, one more thing is the, is the service. Now, selling a property, if you just go on the property itself, we're just selling a property. But all the additional services that might be attached to it, maybe we have to look at how you actually make that offer. Do you also offer uh, a collaboration with uh, guys to do the renovation, for example, yeah, or furniture with Chris? <laughs> yeah. You know, they come and choose the furniture, yeah. So you've got to think out of the box nowadays, I think. If you're going online, there are too many online stuff that you find but how do you make yours be the top yeah i think that that's where the difference will align i always say how do you make it things. mad i used to word, use the word mad how do i make my stuff my service mad now what it mad stands for is make a difference <laughs> <laughs> oh somebody's um irene Tao is also asking you that um is pony diverse a franchise uh, hmm, uh, no, it's it's not a franchise. So so I I started it uh, back in two thousand eight two thousand nine. Uh, we do have a few branches around. I mean we we're actually in KB, and we have a branch in Bali as well. Uh, but but no, it's it's not a franchise. I would I would love to make it a franchise because yeah. supposedly a franchise you just sit back and let the money come in, right? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh, but a 
the, the diving business is, uh, is very, very hard to franchise because it's a very personal experience, uh, learning to dive and having the instructor teach you uh, to dive. So, uh, so not a franchise, but uh, I wish, I wish. <laughs> So you have a branch in Bali. Yes. Who takes care of that um, branch? Yes. So, so I have a partner uh, in Bali. He's uh, Japanese. So we're, we're good friends. And he uh, basically uh, focuses on the Japanese market. In a place like Bali, uh, it's very hard to, to have a business like, uh, like Pony. Same like what Ambrose is saying. It's only in Brunei where you get business doing many different things. In other countries, you have to really focus and specialize. So, so our branch mm -hmm. in Bali focuses only on Japanese uh, divers. Uh, they, they take Japanese, uh, they deal with agents in Japan and they bring out Japanese divers and, and that's it. Now, of course, they do have the odd one or two that'll come in and dive. And of course, we promote them to the divers in Brunei as well to go. Uh, but yeah, so, so I, I, I go there probably maybe once a year to, um, have a look, but uh, I'm not involved in the day-to-day -day business of, of the uh, Bali branch. Are you thinking of opening another branch elsewhere or? Uh, there has been discussions, uh, nothing very serious. Now with our uh, Pony Marine, so which is the uh, commercial diving and marine engineering division uh, entity. So that it, we've actually just registered in Malaysia. Uh, being a service provider for uh, sort of uh, marine construction, offshore vessels, or maritime industry. Uh, we have a very strong presence, uh, even more so in, in Miri and in Labuan. So, so we have registered in Miri and we're hoping to uh, offer our services there. And we uh, will be registering as well in Labuan uh, later this year. And these are uh, focusing only on the commercial services, so not, not the recreational diving. Okay. Thank you, Dai. So, Chris, <laughs> um, what since you've mentioned before that um, the attraction is slowing down a little bit for you, is there any plans to um, market it to more people or to give some kind of like um, what is that called? To give some kind of um, attractions for people to come and visit Wilago or join Wilago as a vendor? Um, for this moment, we are working hard on the marketing for, for, for reaching out the audience, like uh, the customer, the shoppers. So for the vendors at this moment, we are, of, of course, we are continue to to working hard on our marketing strategy. Of course, marketing strategy is very important, how to reach them, reach them out. We already know our audience. Uh, so now then it's the time we need to, uh, we, 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 we need to reach them to uh, reach them correctly in the right way, in the right strategy. So yeah, um, fortunately I can't share my strategy yeah, at this course. moment. So yeah, so, uh, so let's see in the next one, uh, next, uh, next month onwards, uh, there will be something different uh, will be released from Villago.com. Okay. Mm, yeah. So, so yeah. <laughs> Definitely the traffic is like up and down. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, e-commerce platform is, is yet the, the right way of shopping in our culture yet in our in a country yet so we have to continue uh sharing the the positive uh positive uh, uh message to the to the to the shoppers and to let them experience more on uh the the e-commerce uh, shopping environment so 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 yeah so this these are the thing we are still continue working from our side as an e-commerce player mm. because we need the shopper to shop and also we cannot forget the vendors they they uh, without them we cannot uh, we, we do not have any products to sell so both of them are our boss <laughs> <laughs> our bosses <laughs> but of course like just now there is a question that how to start a platform well of course for myself uh, personally i think that anyone can start platform 
as long as they they have their they have the heart and and they are fear enough and they have <laughs> like the Ambrose uh, sharing so if they are fear, fear in fair enough uh, they they have the heart to create a platform anyone can do but I see at the end of the day is still the uh, the maintenance of it how 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 what is your patient on this uh, digital market uh, what is your patient on uh, digital environment what is your patient on business and even in business today we have pandemic tomorrow we don't know what else is yeah. coming so we have to always ready right we have to always ready so every day we have to think of the the uh, what you call this? Uh, every day we have to think of uh, what is next after pandemic. Yeah. We have to get our re ourselves ready, prepared before the obstacle. Yeah. So in business, this is the challenge. Uh. So that's why uh, uh, I totally agree with uh, Ambrose. Uh, you must be fear enough <laughs> <laughs> to run a business. I yeah. fell. I make a lot of mistakes in my uh, previous uh uh, in my uh, previous ex uh, business experience, I make a lot, lot of losses. I make a lot of mistakes. So we, we, we just don't give up. Don't shut down the business. As you started with this, and you have to continue with it. And uh, whatever obstacle comes, we just have to think of a, 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 a new way. Just be open and source of the right, uh, the right, uh, solution for your business yeah. and your team. Yeah, I think teamwork is very important. Also, is the it, it, we, because without the team, without the employees, how could we even grow? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, that's that's uh personally like I I I I feel it this way. A personal sharing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Bruce, did you want to add something? Yeah. I heard you. Oh, yeah. She yeah. touched on the area which is so important during this period of pandemic. It is whether how much how much resilience you have, how much commitment you have on your business. Uh, I call it you more a lot of people I met, it is fear, they have a fear to fail. Mm -hmm. So if you have a fear to fail, then it's very difficult for you to make the right decisions. So you need to convert your mind to be there to fail. So if you dare to fail, then you are willing to take on certain risks. Yeah, like in, in the present time, do you keep your staff all on because you know that at the end of this, it's all going to change? Or do you sack all your staff? And then hope it'll ch once it changes, you try to go and grab everybody back. So this is, if you sack all your staff, I say that this is fear to fail. It's fear to fail. That means you're, you're very afraid, you just get rid of everything. But someone else might be a dare to fail. That means they're willing to take and relook at what they're doing, pivot or find solutions, not at straight away do something uh, that might be too hasty. You know, I'll share one more thing. Somebody asked me, what is the biggest mistake that you think you've done in, in, in your business journey? And I said, actually, I, I thought that I would never make a mistake or should be making mistakes after 45 years in different businesses. But then actually, you know, to tell you, everybody still makes mistakes, you learn. So basically, the mistake that I would have made, I, I've gone through the same uh, thing as what Chris has, has gone through. I've failed. I've uh, lost money. I've, in my early days at 25 years old, I lost, I lost money because I did silly things and silly decisions. Yeah, being an accountant, I did silly decisions <laughs> then. Yeah. But now, after so many years, after 40 over years, you realize you can put everything in place. So one of the biggest things is making hasty decisions. You know, sometimes you need to sit back and think a little bit about your decision, whether this is to invest, decision to, to, to downsize, decision to make yourself lean or whatever. You need to take a bit of time. Okay. Oh. You know, it, it'll be a situation whether you may be right, your staff might be right, but also both of you could be wrong at the same time. So a little bit of patience, a little bit of calculating, 
and then making a decision actually will save a lot of headache in the future. But then somebody else will say, but if you opportunity will close. So there is a balance. I think his, yeah, his line is breaking. Yeah, his line is breaking. Um, <sighs> I, uh... <gasps> oh, goodness. Oh. Uh -huh. yeah. Gone. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I completely. Oh, he's back. To cut me to what he called delete me. <laughs> 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 Maybe no censorship. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you lost. I I lost. Uh, I don't know where you lost me. Somewhere. I think it was along the lines of. Uh, in fact, both Chris and I, breaking. collaboration is very critical in business. Can you all hear me? Yeah, now I can. Whoop. Still a little laggy though. Hello. Hi. Okay, you can hear me. Yeah, a little bit laggy. Hi. Um, collaboration is a very critical point in, in business, especially in Brunei because the size of the market, if you don't collaborate, it's very difficult to actually move your business forward. Yeah, Chris mentioned about collaboration with me. Yeah, I, I'm very right. I think there are many things we could collaborate. But Thai, I got a suggestion. I think in, in your business, you are right next to another club that you should be collaborating. Oh, the Yacht Club? Yeah. Yeah, yes, actually, we, we have uh, had some discussions on, on collaboration. That's, that's correct, actually. Yes. <laughs> because to me, it's like a no-brainer if you get the right uh, balance with the Yacht Club. Mm. You've got a huge clientele there who would be very keen to learn how to dive. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, actually, in fact, we're... Yeah, especially we're, we're moving. school holidays are coming up. <laughs> yes. Yes, in, in fact, we're, we're moving. So, so we're now located in Sarasa uh, Water Sports Complex. And that is all the way in at the end of Sarasa Beach. Uh, so we're, we're, we're actually in the midst of moving okay. to uh, the, the restaurant that is right beside the Yacht Club. Uh, so, so we'll actually be right beside the Yacht yeah, Club. In I, I, I do. <laughs> yep, yep. Yes. So, so, you, uh, so you haven't moved yet? You no, haven't moved yet. Uh, we delayed everything. So, so because of the COVID, uh, okay. so we, we, we minimize expenses everywhere. So we stopped renovating. We stopped the move. Uh, right, and, right. and focus just on salaries, and so 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 we we've delayed the move. That'll happen probably in a few months' time. So here's an ideal collaboration with the committee of the yacht club. You have the clientele on one side, and you have a very interesting uh, pastime that uh, the clientele can take, especially the next three months when the school yeah. holidays. A lot of the teachers <laughs> can't even leave the country. <laughs> yes, <laughs> well, I, I know they're looking at. Uh, Sailing, trying to, to to introduce sailing again. So mm. for me, uh, diving is another classic one to do. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that do you have? Um, how, what about your ISO? How has that helped with your business? Yeah. So mm. uh, we we were one of the uh, uh, companies in the in the program with with there uh, to to go through the consultancy program and and later on to uh, get the audit with BV. So we've received our ISO nine thousand one. Uh, I think uh, the uh, just uh, the end of last year, end of twenty nineteen, and it's it's definitely helped us a lot with Pony Marine. So our commercial diving uh, services and, and sort of commercial work. Uh, because we, we're sort of tying up a lot with the big companies, the oil and gas companies, uh, with government uh, tenders as well. So having that uh, definitely uh, gives us a bit more credibility as we move into these uh, much larger projects. Mm -hmm. And I think internally, uh, you know, quality is what every business wants. And that's what ISO 9001 is. The, the focus is quality. And uh, every business wants quality, but at the same time, everybody has a different way of doing it. Uh, so this ISO 9001, I guess, uh, really helped us to maybe, um, how would you say, uh, structure that process uh, a bit better uh, internally and also for all the staff. So, so definitely it's, it's helped quite a bit. We are looking at other uh, certifications as well. 
uh, more re more industry specific uh, for for commercial or marine work uh, and also for occupational uh, health and safety uh, in, in the coming months. So uh, working with the uh, oil and gas sectors, do they uh, ask for like, certifications before you get to offer your services or is it just here's our services if you want it? Uh, yes. They do ask for uh, a number of certifications. Uh, they don't actually ask for the ISO 9001. They ask for very technical uh, certifications or very industry specific certifications. There are other ISO ones that are industry specific. Now having the ISO though, I think, I think it, it does help because it sort of puts you above everyone else who does not have it. It is not a requirement, but it, it is a very, very uh, a big part of the brand. Mm. Do, for uh, Ambrose, do you have um, certifications for like, accounting that you took? Uh, yes, I, I, I'm a qualified chartered accountant from UK. Yeah. And some of my staff are all qualified with degrees in accounting. We have I-ready staff that are training to become full accountants. And I think we will confirm three of them in the next year or so. And then we've got two more who have come in to, to, to take over their, their positions. So in, in my industry, yes, it needs the qualification, but the, having the qualification, you need the experience. So we get staff who come in with a degree in accounting and then they find that the first time they're looking at the cash book. In their life. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite amazing because doing accounts is not, it's a lot of, lot of experience. It takes somebody about, I would say two to three years before they can really do a full set of accounts. Yeah, I'm not talking about just having a, a computer and then just adding the figures into a database yeah. and then the computer does all the accounts for you. You'll get something, but it's not the full thing. But I think more important is the experience of individuals. You see, I, there is a thing, of just talking about an accountant, there are two types of accountants. You've got an accountant accountant and you've got a commercial accountant. So an account or business accountant. An accountant, accountant does your books. He'll sit there and he'll chug away and put all your figures and tell you at the end of the month what you've made and uh, what's your cash flow like. But a business accountant is totally different because he looks at the whole holistic view of your business and actually moves your business according to the, the data that he gets. Remember, accounts is only a history. It's only a record of what you've already done. What you want is the future, what you could do. And so there are these accountants, who I, I call them business accountants, who can actually forecast, help you, and grow with the business. It's hard to find a business accountant in Brunei. <laughs> mm. oh. Majority of them are accountant, accountant, <laughs> or they are just only doing bookkeeping. <laughs> I think we're all lagging again. Oh. <laughs> I'm sure uh, Ambrose, Ambrose will be happy to recommend some uh, business accounting services to you. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, most definitely. <laughs> no, because, it, it, you know, one of the things is that whatever business you do, you have to enjoy your business. You must like what you're doing. Like in my case, I, I, I love the job I do. Yeah, I love all the trouble, the... I, I, I sometimes tell my staff that if I don't have stress, I get bored. So I need to be stressed out with a lot of work and I'll go home, think about it, but make sure you have the balance at home. But I think it's the same with Ty and Chris. They are totally devoted to their business and <laughs> you love what you're doing. If not, you won't be in that business. If I know people who get involved in business, they actually just look at the money, you know, or oh, I can make a lot of money. Actually, they don't like the business and these will not go far. So commitment and, and loving your business is very important. Uh, loving your work or whatever you do, that you enjoy what you do. And that that's is very where important. Your <laughs> out. Yeah. Once you do that, you can see it's it, I, 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 a long time I've been looking at this blue ocean. They talk about blue ocean. How do you come up with uh, ideas? Somebody asked, I said, uh, how do you come up with uh, good ideas? And I said, it's, it comes within. Somebody cannot teach you, but then you could get into a group discussion and brainstorm something. And maybe you can come up with a good idea. Because now with COVID and it, the world, well, actually the world is not coming out of COVID. Today's report said it's getting worse. <laughs> so basically what you can do is that there must be 
what we term as uh, interesting ideas that could adapt itself to the current situation. And it's us and people in business trying to find those unicorns that could be a big thing in the future because of the new order of what's going on. So maybe maybe there are people in Brunei who can actually come up with these unicorns because it doesn't stop anywhere in the world. It can be anywhere. I always say the eye center or the eye center is a place where these unicorns ideas can come out. But it needs it cannot be one individual. It has to be a team. I mean, it's a group of different industries. Thai, Chris, myself, Fatin, Umi, sit down over coffee and think, hey, what can we do? You know, and that's when ideas are born. Yeah. Yeah. Totally mm -hmm. different industry coming together and thinking about what that is. Yeah, you're right. Business can actually can be fun. <laughs> yeah, business can be fun. Yeah, it is. Yes. If you find it fun, then I know yeah. that you're confident. <laughs> <laughs> I I I am I I see myself a little bit different from 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 everyone here because uh, myself is only all level graduated. I'm not from IT at all. My background is admin, <laughs> so I only have uh, over ten years experience of uh, admin, uh, administrative uh, working experience in uh, in different uh, uh, industry. So so I don't know where my fear come from. <laughs> So, uh, uh, I uh, taking the risk and uh, continue the business, whether it's up or down. Like um, uh, Ambrose is very right. Uh, we are not giving up uh, our employees. Uh, I'm not only running Vilago. I have also cleaning service company. Every day we have obstacles. <laughs> then, uh, if that sometimes when they's too quiet, we 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 get bored. <laughs> <laughs> we get bored. What's wrong with them? <laughs> there must be something wrong with these people. If they are getting too good, there must be something wrong with these people also. <laughs> yeah. So actually business can be fun. <laughs> so Irene, you said there's about six people now and they're uh, working for Milago. How about yeah. Thai? How many how many people do you have working for Pony Divers? I'm just wondering. Uh, we have uh, 40 staff uh, with Pony, uh, so the Pony Group, Pony Marine, and, and all of it. I think in, in the recent couple of months, we probably have uh, a few less, probably uh, uh, due to the change in schedule. Uh, we, we did not uh, fire anybody, but I think uh, a few of the staff, uh, ex staff, uh, found uh, different opportunities where they were not on a three-day schedule. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. So unfortunately, we did, we did have to lose a few. Um, uh, in, in the in the recent months. Uh, maybe just a few things uh, I'd like to add. I think we're coming to the end a little bit. Yeah. Um, I think just coming to the topic of, of making the best of any situation, which is the topic uh, of the this this uh, forum, I guess. Um, I think uh, when we came into this uh, COVID situation, we, we really had to uh, think about, uh, you know, as the topic says, how to make the best of things. Now, uh, we had a lot of opportunities which could bring in uh, sort of more revenue, but they all needed money. You know, uh, we could have gone into uh, focus on underwater welding. It's lucrative business, but I need to buy an underwater welding set. You know, so we had a lot of things we had to really think about how do we go forward for the next few months uh, back in March when this happened. Uh, so we really focused on leveraging off what we already had, which we did not think about before. And we, you know, we started talking to the staff as well. Uh, and a big, a big part of that is, is our staff. So we have a lot of staff and they all have very different experiences. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we, we found that uh, one of our staff is, is great at landscaping. He's actually my carpenter, you know, and then we started doing some, uh, we offered some landscaping services, you know. So we, we diversified a little bit, especially just to get some cash flow. We have a, a facilities team, about 10 people. So we have our own carpenter, painter, welder. Uh, so we, we, we opened that up to the public. We did some uh, small renovation work for other people. Uh, we, we did some, we, we repair our own boats in-house and we opened that up to the public as well. Uh, so it was really rethinking about uh, the existing assets, the existing resources, our staff, our, our existing machinery. Uh, what else can we do with that? And, and I think we, we came up with a, a number of different products. 
uh, which which actually brought in some revenue. So that that really helped to carry us through, especially the worst of of the COVID months, where you know we we had like uh, barely any any cash flow. Uh, so so that was definitely uh, one thing that really helped. Um, just re looking at, at what you have again, and, and next one was also uh, communication. So. Uh, I think we all started working from uh, home, uh, especially the administrative staff. So we we had already set up uh, sort of a digitalization of our business since about 2018. So that really became very effective uh, now because you know all our working files they were on Google Drive. Uh, we were all on on, on WhatsApp and Telegram. Uh, we had uh, some uh, project software as well where we could communicate with each other on, on projects. Uh, so, so communication within our team uh, was really important during this time and also communication with all the staff. So we couldn't do our regular weekly meetings, our regular monthly team briefings. And uh, what I did with the staff was I would update them every other day or once every few days over, over WhatsApp. Uh, just to let them know what's happening with COVID in Brunei and around the world and how that impacts us. And that really helped the staff to maybe feel uh, confident as well that the business is is aware and is trying to do what it can uh, to return to, to a, you know, some sort of new normal. Yeah. Uh, so, so I think uh, these, these two things really helped a lot, which was communication and also leveraging off our existing mm -hmm. assets, which there are a lot. If you actually uh, don't look for it, <laughs> but once you have to look for it, there's actually a lot of it around. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Zach. There's, um, Ambrose and Chris, do you want to add anything to that before we end our session today? <laughs> no, I think Ty, Ty covered quite a lot. <laughs> Thinking out of the box, yeah. yeah, and pivoting where you can and using your expertise. Mm -hmm. I, I will add that one of my clients, which is the hotel, they start offering home cleaning service and drivers for people. It's just an add-on. And they had take-ups on it on yeah. better tour. Mm. Okay, thank you. Chris, anything? Oh, so far, nothing. Okay. <laughs> they had covered majority of <laughs> communication <laughs> and really looking into your resources. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. we've come to the end of our session today. Um, thank you to the attendees who came and thank you Chris Hulago, Tai of Pony Divers and Ambrose of Base Advice for spending an hour with us today. Yeah, thank you for, for having us today also. <laughs> thank you. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Um, if people do want to contact me to ask me a little bit more on how I can help as well, uh, uh, they can easily reach <laughs> me through Pony Divers on social media. So, so yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, hold on. Thank you. Um, Patin wants to do a screen capture to put on oh, okay. our social media. Okay. Um, okay. One, two, three. Okay. She got thank it. You. Okay. okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to meet you Thanks, guys. Sam. All right. Bye. -bye. See you all. Bye. Bye.